is that we all get it Don't give in to the pain, just keep living cause What's going on, guys? I'm super excited. Today, I have Brandon from Orlando, Florida, who's, who's crushing it. Uh, he's only 26, 27 years old. We're going we're gonna to break down exactly how he was able to make almost $100,000 in one month. You heard that right. 26, 27-year-old making 100K months. And we're going to break down exactly how he did that. So I want to thank Brandon again uh, for coming on and taking the time to do this interview. Thank you for having me, man. Um, I definitely appreciate the... Uh, you know, the shout out. Um, and uh, for sure, I'm ready to give, you know, your, your audience and you exactly what you guys are wanting to hear. And hopefully we go ahead and uh, keep ins inspiring people. Awesome. Awesome. So for the people who kind of don't know your story, let's, let's back up a little bit. Talk about what you were doing before real estate, what made you want to get into real estate, and then we go from there. Got you. Yeah. So I'm going to start it out, man. Um, so for me, it was something to, you know, I'm from Queens, New York. Uh, my family's Colombian. And, um, you know, so I'm from Columbia descent and, uh, kind of, we, we, we came over here, you know, grandma and mom came over here for a better life in Orlando. And, um, you know, they, they wanted me to do things kind of the regular way, right. They wanted me to go to high school, do good, go to college, get my degree and then, um, you know, get married, have kids and, and, and live that whole, you know, pension 401k lifestyle. So that's what, you know, I wanted to do, but really I, I was, I, my, my father was absent in my life and that took a real big burden on me, right? And uh, when I met my father at like around 15, 16, when I moved to Florida around, you know, a little bit before then, I found out that he was in real estate. So for some reason, I'm that type of guy that I like to prove people wrong. So, you know, I, 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 growing up, I was, I was bad, man. I was a bad kid. I, I, I used to get expelled from every, every school, um, you know, and, and it was mostly because I had that you know, like, you know, why doesn't my dad love me? And, you know, I'm living this whole, you know, boohoo child life that, um, you know, I was like, whatever. So when I actually grew up, um, I started, you know, wanting to take my life seriously. And um, I wasn't able to walk at graduation because I had to go to an alternative school, but I was able to walk in the summer graduation, right, since I got expelled. And, and ever since then, I was like, you know what, I'm going to start taking my life a little bit more seriously and doing things the, the way that I want to do them. So I started working at the barbershop, right? Um, I always wanted to cut hair. I like to stay fresh, right? So I said, what is an easier way for me to, you know, always have my beard? By well, that time, I didn't really have too much of a beard. But, you know, always have my hair cut done. Mm -hmm. so I said, you know what? Let me, start, let me start learning how to cut hair. So I used to go to a barbershop to where my girlfriend's uh, cousin worked. And uh, I got a job there cleaning. So I was cleaning the barbershop, cleaning the barbershop for about two, two years um, and I started learning how to cut hair as I'm learning how to cut hair. I'm like, okay, it's paying decent money. I like it. But I started noticing that there was really no kind of, it wasn't my passion. Number one. And number two, there was really no future for me because I, I was seeing that at the end of the day, I had to save on my own, which I really didn't know how to do at that time. Right. I wasn't able to kind of, you know, we didn't have any benefits and, and I'm the type of person that I love sports. So I'm always getting hurt. So, you know, for me, it was like, okay, I get the free you know, come and go as I please. I get to go to lunch whenever I want, but it, it just wasn't working out for me. So I decided to go to college and go that whole route. And uh, then I, I started going to college, working at the barbershop at the weekends, cutting hair. And then I started um, working at the uh, emergency department here in, in Orlando, Florida for a hospital. Um, and I was traditionally going to school to become a nurse. Okay. So as I'm going to school to become a nurse, um, you know, I finally get my AA degree, working at the hospital for about five years, transporting people around. And I start noticing that the type of work that they do, I love it, but they only get paid like 60, 70 grand a year. Right. And they have to work like three 12 hour shifts. And it's, you know, sometimes, you know, with the people that come in, it's a lot of work. And I said, you know what, at that time I was still building a relationship with my father. And, um, you know, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and try real estate out, you know, like there's, there's, I'm going to show him that I could do exactly what he can do and I'm going to do it better, you know? So, you know, I would pick his brain about real estate and ask him questions here and there. And, uh, you know, he basically kind of was like, yeah, you should try it out. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, you damn right. I'm going to try it out. So ended up, you know, getting my license, um, got my license. And then I was like, you know what, let me try the regular retail. 
didn't work out the way I liked it. You know, I, I honestly, what I, what I love about wholesaling real estate is that I'm able to go ahead and, and have leverage on both sides of the transaction. When it comes to traditional real estate, you know, you get paid to represent somebody. Right. And, you know, if somebody submits an offer and you're representing somebody, you have to disclose that with, with whoever you're rep representing, right? Seller or buyer. So, you know, and, and, and if you take somebody to go look at a house and they're looking for a 3-2 in, in this area, if they don't like the paint, they won't buy that house. So you have to move on to the next house. So anyways, first time I get a lead from my broker at that time and uh, I'm driving like an hour away to show him properties. Oh. Um, and uh, he ended up just firing me after six months, <laughs> didn't get paid anything. And I'm like, you know what? I, I didn't like this at all. So I start YouTubing, right? You know, the best university out there, YouTube. And uh, that's when I came across wholesaling real estate. And um, I was working at the barbershop, still doing that type of stuff. And, and I ran across somebody that was kind of doing it. And uh, I hassled him and hassled him and hassled him until he started, you know, he was like, all right, you want to try this out? You can't do traditional. You can't do commercial. You, you, you got to kind of pick one. It's going to be too much for you to do. Right. So he's like, if you want to wholesale, I'll teach you, but you, you got to stay with this. Only. And I'm like, all right, you got it. So I, he, he basically started me off doing signs, you know, so I was putting out signs for him. And I think in, in like the first three weeks, he paid me like two or three grand for a house that, he, that I sold for him off of a sign. So once he did that, I was like, like, I'm getting paid to put out signs. I just got to pay. So that's when I, I really got sold. And then that's where I would literally go put out signs all the time. I would ask him every question that, I, that there was in the book. And um, it kind of started that way. Um, you know, after, after kind of a long period of time, we were together. And, uh, you know, he kind of went his way. Um, and I went my way. We had a great relationship and made a lot of money together. Um, and that's when I kind of ventured out on my own and started wholesaling real estate on my own. Okay. So talk about your first deal when, when you did it on your own. Talk about that first deal, how, how it all went through. When you did it on your own. Yeah. So my first deal was really hard, right? Because if you think about it, the person... Um, you know, that, that basically like, you know, showed me he was putting them under contract himself. I was just merely just putting out signs and I would show the property and, and, and I would fail a lot because I'm young, right? I'm 23 at that time, 24. Um, and I'm literally just talking about how to flip a house and I'm trying to pitch a house to somebody and I'm still learning. I just got my license, you know, literally six months before that. Um, seven months before that. So I'm still learning all the terminology. I'm, I've never been a homeowner before, so I still don't kind of, you know, so, but what I do have is confidence. I know that, you know, and if you can teach me something, I'll remember. It. So, you know, I'm, I'm learning all of that. So when we we're together, I knew all the contracts. I knew how to do all that together. I knew all, most of that stuff, but it was still very, very reckoning for me to go ahead and do it on my own. So what I do is reach out to Chris Chico. Chris Chico is like, Hey, listen, buddy. I don't have too much time right now on my hands for mentorship, but, but you know what? Here's a plan. Um, try this out. Right. And I reached out to a other bunch of gurus, you know, on YouTube or whatnot on their Facebook and Instagram. And, uh, you know, they, 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 now I understand it. They, they, they just don't probably look at the DMs because they get so many. So anyway, so basically he was the only one that really reached out and actually helped me out for free. Like he didn't even charge me for this whole little 30 day plan that he made me. Um, I had some money at that time. So I had some investors. This is the crazy part about it. So I had some investors that I was selling properties to. So you what I did is I actually told them. You had cash buyers lined up already? Yeah, I had cash buyers because remember I was selling houses to people with, with my, with basically, you know, my partner at that time. So what I said is I said, listen, I have money. Like at this point I have like maybe $5,000 that I can spend. Right. And my bank account probably have like seven. but to me, it's like, we're, I'm from Queens. So my, my motto is get rich or die trying like 50 cent. Right. So I was like, you know what? I don't, I don't want to blow this cause I know how it feels to not have anything, right. but let me see if I can OPM, right. Other people's money. Let me see if I can go ahead and leverage somebody else's money. So I, I knew a cash bar that I was pretty close with. And I said, Hey, listen, man, you know, I'm not, I'm not doing this anymore with this, with this guy. I'm kind of on my own now. You know that, you know what wholesaling is. 
you know that obviously, you know, we can get you good properties and you buy and flip properties often. I said, would you mind, right, if I cut our wholesale prices in half? So what I mean by that is that if investors, cash buyers, if they're looking for properties, you know, to flip and they want to make a, a gross return of 12%, right? And, I'm, and I know that. So let's just say I, I get a property at 70 and for him to make his, you know, for him to go ahead and make his 12%, he has to buy at 90, right? right. I know that I'm going to push it all the way to 90 to make that 20,000. So our deal was that I would go ahead and cut him in half the wholesale market value, right? right? But he would put up the marketing budget money. Yeah. So crazy thing is, is he puts up $1,000, right? I go ahead and, and I take Chris Chico's plan and I already knew most of it, but I never done it on my own because most of the time, like I said, all I was doing was putting on signs and selling properties. I didn't know how to market properties. I didn't know how to call people. I didn't know how to do any of that stuff, you know? So I, I, I took his plan together and um, I added a couple stuff and, and tweaked this and tweaked that from what I knew. And I said, you know what? It, it ain't my money. So let me just try it out. Um, that month we sold, we wholesale two houses and um, I ended up making, I don't know. I think it was, so my first deal was like 10,000, it was like ten thousand dollars or something like that, ten thousand eight hundred dollars, and then my second one was around like set, right? So I and then and then the, also the deal was that I had to give him um, like forty percent as well. So um, my cut was that. Um, so let's just put it this way: he made his money's worth on me, and um, you know, and he got to flip the properties. And, uh, you know, it, it was good for me because what I learned from that was I let him take down the first property in his LOC because I was, I was still scared. I was like, well, I already know about the inspection period. I already know my contract in and out. I'm a realtor, right. but for some reason I was still scared. I was like, well, what if I really have to buy that house? What if I'm really obligated to buy the house or what if I don't fulfill the promises of the seller? So I told him, I said, Hey, listen, we already have this deal, this transaction going on. You can just go ahead and, 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 and put on a contract yourself and then pay me when it gets done. He ended up paying me like three months after on one deal. The, uh, basically, you know, my first deal. So he did pay me all my money, but it ended up taking a while. So that was the first lesson that I learned, which was I had to do all the work, do all the marketing. And, and then on top of that, I had him legally put it under contract to where he could have just walked away and screwed me. Um, so you you bet you know you bet after that i started putting everything under contract in my 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 own name for sure so that was my first deal and let me tell you man it, it felt great it honestly did feel great but like really good and it it was scary man it was really scary because as a young person you, you're like does this person are they gonna believe me you know you don't know if they're gonna believe you a lot of the times you know us as host fillers we don't you know it's like you have to have confidence but like if you pull up in a whatever car you have right we don't all have lamborghinis and Rolls Royces. So if you pull up in a Honda Civic from 2001 and you're like, I have $200,000 cash to buy your house. You're like, are they going to believe me? Right. No, that's, that, those are good. Those are things that, um, that do hold people back. All these questions is what if, what if this happens and what if that happens? But I think what you, in that story, there was a lot of nuggets that people might've missed. First of all, you were very creative on how to get your first deal. You reached out to somebody, you, you leveraged other people's money and you wanted to see it all the way through and you gained all that experience, even though, you know, he paid you later down the road, but you, you were able to see a deal from start to finish. And I think a lot of people, um, you know, when, when they're not, when they don't have money, they can become resourceful and they can get creative and, and you showed exactly how you can do that uh, by getting creative. Yeah. Um, so that's what people need to do. They need to stop, stop making excuses and start getting creative. And, and like you did uh, just, find a way to get that money and, and start marketing. Uh, but I want, what I want to talk about now is that uh, 90K month, I want to talk about exactly uh, how, you got the, how, you got the, how you got those deals, uh, what, what lead you, what, you know, what marketing channel, cold call, RVM, direct mail, what lead you targeted. Can you kind of break that down for us so people can kind of get some practical information they can apply in their own business? Yes, for sure, for sure. So, um, so the first, so literally guys, that, 90k month was it was actually so it was four deals four deals and it was 93,000 that I made 
Um, it was well, eighty nine. It was ninety two thousand. I'm sorry. So, first deal that I that that it was it was actually my first virtual wholesale. Okay. Virtual, and what I mean by virtual is that I literally can't go and see the property. So the property was in Miami. Oh, wow. Um, and and for some reason I don't know what happens, but sometimes like when I buy lists from places or something or whatever, I get properties from a different area in um. Uh, in, in, in different places. Maybe I, I missed the zip code and typed in the wrong zip code and I ended up getting that. So this was a lead that came in, literally I wanted to say about six months before. And um, we weren't, we, we just honestly weren't able to go ahead and, and, and get a hold of them. Um, so what we did is um, we went ahead and, and tried cold calling. At that time, I just came back from um, Phoenix, Arizona. So I just spent some time with Carlos Casal and man, was it mind blowing to go ahead and just get so much information poured into you. So you're like, okay, back to the drawing board. You know, this has been working for me all year, but now it's time to step it up and see, you know, what, what exactly, you know, do I need to do to scale? So I start taking old leads and I, and I, I'm start cold calling literally myself. Right. Cause at that time I just spend a chunk of money with them. Um, you know, it's kind of the end of the year. So like, you know, Sometimes I'm very conservative of what I spend, but money do tend, you know, it does tend to go little by little. And by the time you look at your, you're like, hold on, wait a minute, where's this money going? So I'm like, okay, you know what? I have money to go ahead and hire people. I have money to do all my marketing, but I got to stop making excuses. I got to hold myself accountable, right? So I said, you know what? I'm going to quit the social media, right? I'm going to write down daily goals right? About what I want to do each day. And I'm going to fulfill those goals and, and I'm going to hold myself accountable. So one of those was following up with my, with my old leads, right? So what I go ahead and do is I go into my podio system and I said, okay, let me see exactly from the bottom all the way to the bottom. Let me see which properties, which people I need to follow up with. So I go and end up calling, um, this, uh, th these people. Um, and, and it was, uh, at that point in time, it was something to where the, the lady, she was in a, uh, nursing home right and uh, they just weren't ready to sell and you know they weren't ready to give it up so I say you know what let me go ahead and give them a call and see if, see what's going on so I gave them a call and fair enough they're like hey listen you know we're, we're kind of wanting some 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 money some cash for this for that and the third and you know we think that it's ready to let it go that you know the property is this is going on with the bathroom this is going on with this so end up getting the deal done um, and, and literally having my first virtual wholesale deal. So I was very excited about that one. Um, and then on my, uh, my second one was a property Can that I actually you, tested out. Let me, let me interrupt you. So that deal right there, you said this one was a virtual, this one from Miami. Can you break down the numbers? What was the purchase price? Would you assign it? How'd you find the buyer? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. So break. So the breakdown was, um, 200, right? I told him I would give them 200,000. Um, and I was going to host it for, for, uh, 235. What was um, ARV? ARV was 330, oh. 330, 340 around there. Yeah. Um, and I, and I ended up, uh, just finding literally a buyer just through Instagram. Um, you know, I had somebody reach out to me and say, Hey, listen, I said, Hey, I'm looking for buyers in, um, in Miami. And, uh, somebody ended up reaching out, finding me, uh, you know, finding me a buyer. So that's the way that one worked out. I used my title company here in Orlando. Never saw the property. Never took pictures of the property. The property was sold sight unseen. So it was great. The crazy funny thing about it is that we had to get a power of attorney. Because remember, she was in a nursing home. So, I, I, you know, throughout the time, I was like, you know what? I might have to go to Miami and try to get this, you know, this, this homeowner to sign this. But she doesn't even know me because I'm working with her daughter. You know, so it was very, you know, I had to be very creative and have faith, but I did. And we made sure that the homeowner was taken care of. We, uh, we, we obviously asked her, you know, hey, listen, we know that we're closing a little bit sooner. Do you need help moving? I can hire some, some movers for you. And, you know, she ended up taking everything, you know, care of by herself and, and it ended up working out well. So I love always, you know, providing for the homeowner and the investor all the time. Awesome. Okay, and break down the other deals you said you was. It was yeah, so the second, so the second deal was twenty seven thousand. I actually sent out a postcard just like this from Yellow Letter HQ, right? That has the picture and it has the name. 
Um, and it was to a, uh, a high equity seniors list. And um, that one as well was, so remember at this point, I'm literally, I think I sent that out in November, right before I went to uh, go see Carlos and Sal, or it might've been end of October. And at this point, I'm not spending any marketing. I'm just literally going through all my leads. Right. Call this person. He said, hey, yeah, I still got your postcard. You know, I'm doing my whole little script that I'm already used to in my head. So I said, you know what? I sent you a postcard a couple months ago. He said, you know what? Come on and get it. I'm ready to sell. Wow. I, I said, okay, when can we make an appointment? He said, are you ready right now? And I'm like, you're damn right I'm ready right now. You know, I'll meet you there right now. And he's like, okay, go to the house. The guy literally wanted almost nothing for it, right? He wanted, I think it was, to be honest with you, I think it was like 53. The house ARV was around, I'm sorry, he wanted, no, it, I'm, it, it was, it was uh, 53. It was 53, signed the contract, but his wife wasn't there. But I knew, you know, he's like, oh, she can sign it later. And in my head, I'm thinking, oh, this is about to be like a forty, fifty thousand dollars wholesale deal. Call him at nighttime to set up an appointment to go have his wife, right? To go look at the property, get a key, and kind of finagle my way and say, hey, listen, we still need your wife to sign. And he's like, hey, listen, Brandon, I got a higher offer. Wow. I'm like, listen, we have, you know, we have a legally binding contract. Blah, blah, blah. You know, I play, I play my, my my whole realtor thing and get into my whole mediation, arbitration, use these big words to try to scare him. And he was like, well, you know, my wife never signed, uh, you know, and I'm like, because he was kind of skeptical a little bit too about the taxes. So I even recorded myself on the phone with him saying, hey, listen, this is Brandon. I'm be playing for XXS's, uh, you know, uh, uh, tax, uh, you know, taxes on his property at 123 Main Street. So I said, listen, we have a video, we have a contract, you know, this is legit. Like you can't. So the next day, you know, he's like, well, you know, I don't know, whatever. Next day I called him. I said, listen. How much, you know, how much more, whatever. We end up doing it for 74 or 73, something like that, right? Signed it at that, found a buyer literally the next day or two, sold it for, I think it was 93, 93 or something like that. So that's where that one came from. That one was like one of the easiest deal, we, deals we closed in literally like 10 days. And uh, the actual, the person that I sold it to was actually wholesaling it as well. Oh, so they like doubled. Yeah, they close on the property, but now they're gonna like sell it immediately to somebody else. What was, so, the, what was the ARV on that one? One seventy. Oh wow! Man, well, and, and it had a brand new roof. Oh man, if you would have got it at fifty, that would have been forty, forty, uh, forty thousand. Oh man, it would have been it would have been good, man. It would have been good. And then the year before, I had a forty thousand dollar deal, which that was a crazy deal as well. But yeah, man, I mean the good ones, you know, the good ones, they're always really hard. Like you know, they they are. They're really really hard to do. And then my last one was um, my last one was another hard one. It was two brothers that uh, did probate a couple years ago, and uh, it was actually a code violations. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you that, give you guys that golden nugget. It was a code violations, um, and I sent him a postcard. He called in. He didn't, um, you know, I didn't pick up. Called him back like two days later, and he's like, "Yeah, you know, I do want to sell the property. This is what's going on." Um, that, that deal I was supposed to make 43,000. Um, so that, that deal was ARV was 240, got it under contract for 110, right. sold it at 254, 253, sorry, 253. Payoff comes back, right? The mortgage payoff, I had a mortgage and it's been, it was like vacant. And so they were behind on mortgage payoff comes back at like 120 something. Oh, so I'm like, damn. So I tried to finagle my way a little bit with the investor. The homeowners, the two brothers, they were literally, they were like, listen, we understand. We just want the property to go ahead and be put in big, better hands. Because, I, you know, of course, I tell my head, I say, listen, what we're doing for the community right now, we're going to be able to help other homeowners in the area. Why? Because I'm going to fix this property and create a new comp. So the market value is going to go up for everybody else as well. Because I'm going to make this house spectacular. Number two is, obviously, the house is distressed. They didn't even have a garage. Like, the garage was, like, wooden. They put, like, wooden four by, you know. Uh, so, it, it didn't even have, like, it was, like, half a garage. So, I said, you know, obviously, and it was a sentimental house. They grew up in that property. Their mom passed away. So, I said, listen, you know, we're going to make this house an actual great memory without you guys having to come in here and look at it the way it is now. 
Um, so they already knew what was up. They were ready to sell. Um, and, and they were fine with whatever they would make. So I told them, hey, listen, man, obviously we're like $18,000 above what, you know, we, we, we said. Um, and I was like, uh, you know what? It was 120. And I was like, you, I was like, listen, what, what do you want to do to make this deal work? I'm thinking they're going to say, listen, we each want like $10,000. Like, hey, listen, man, whatever you guys, whatever you want to give us out of your heart, give it to me. So I gave each brother $2,000 and they were happy with it. They each were like, hey, listen, one was like, I'm going to go ahead and do pay off my driver license fees and whatnot. The other was like, I'm just going to have a beer. <laughs> so I still gave them each two grand. So it was four grand. And then I wholesaled it for like 155 or whatever. I made 27 on that one as well. So, um, and then I had my last one, which was the smallest one, 3000 in that month. And it was funny because it was a deal that I wholesaled from last year off Craigslist, a condo, two condos. And the, uh, the investor calls me back and he says, Hey, listen, I'm trying to get rid of this property. Would you mind wholesaling it for me? And I said, okay, cool. How much do you want? And he's like, I want, I want this much. Um, and uh, he wanted 52. So I wholesaled it to another investor for 55, quick and easy. Nice, nice. So that's like a double whammy. Yeah, that was that's pretty, pretty cool. What, um, what, as far as what are you doing for marketing? Are you doing cold calling, direct mail? I know you mentioned direct mail and some cold calling. Which, what's your primary marketing channel as of right now, as of today? Direct mail, 100%. You do a lot of direct mail? Direct mail, 100%. That's my, um, I'll show you really quick. So this is what we do. So the big bag, if you guys want the big bag, I personally like direct mail. Other how people much, like. How much mail are you doing a month? Oh, I, I do like maybe budget, 2,000, small. What's, uh, how many pieces is that? Is that uh? That's probably like around maybe three to four thousand, three like three thousand pieces, four thousand pieces. Oh, okay. You're not doing. Uh, you're not heavy on cold calling. Cold calling we do as well. Um, but my main what I love is that direct mail. So let me explain to you why I love direct mail. So what I do is I have this system called. It's basically a stacking system. So what I would do is I go ahead and get delinquency tax delinquent. I'll get absentee owner. I'll get a, um, a, a, you know, absentee owner, tax delinquent, and then I'll get uh, something else, right? So what it does is that if it comes up on e each of those, I know that, number one, it's absentee owned, so they're not there. Right. If it's tax delinquent, I know that there's money issues, right? And um, so those two things, they kind of bump it up for me. So when I send them a piece of mail, I automatically, you know, most of the time, you know, you're going to get in contact with them. A lot of the times you are. So it, it's literally something to where they call in me because cold calling is cold. That's what people don't understand. And to be honest with you, you're getting a lot of leads that are not going to be interested. So it's more of a volume game. Now, direct mail can be very expensive, but by the time, you know, I spend a little bit on a niche list that I've literally targeted in my market. And I know I can sell and acquire at this. I can make an offer literally in five minutes. It's really easy for me to move that property and get it. So, you know, a lot of people go ahead. And now what I'm starting to do is I'm starting to stay in my own lane. Right. And what I mean by that is, you know, a lot of people now, they, they want to go ahead and do 20, 30 deals a month. But if you're doing 30 deals a month and you're wholesaling, you know, your wholesale fee for each deal is a thousand bucks. Well, I'll get one for, for 30. So right. to me, it doesn't matter. Right. Because I feel like everybody, you know, everybody's success is different. So if I get two or three deals each for 20 grand, I'm happy because remember, my team right now consists of literally me, an acquisition manager, two cold callers and a VA. So it's five people. So for me, my overhead isn't that much. Right. So from, from that, from that um, direct mail, how many calls or what's your response rate from that specific direct mail? Review? I response rate is crazy. I, I can promise you that my response rate is crazy. I don't know the numbers, but to be honest with you, I have a student now that I'm, um, you know, kind of helping out. He sent out some mail to around 1500 people and he got around like 190 calls. Oh wow. Yeah, that's and that's no lie. I, you know, I honestly can't lie. But, and, and I get those results too. Now, a lot of the times what we do is we honestly do a call to action type of type of piece. And what that means is that, 
it makes them literally have to do something, pick up the phone and call, you know, um, you know, we do like the, the, the street view, right. But we do also another piece and we do different things. You know, I do cold call, I do RVM, um, and we do that strategically, right? So the first thing that we do is we go ahead and let's just say, I'll break it down to you the way our marketing goes for at least for me. So what we'll do is we'll acquire a list, right? Once we acquire a list, we'll go ahead and fit something broad, like an absentee owner. The absentee owner list is really good, but what ends up happening is that you're going to find people that are that own vacation homes. You're going to find people that are just landlords and there won't be that much motivation. But what's good is that if you have list source, right, that you can get at three cents a record, you go ahead and get a big list, right? And then you'll skip trace it with, with any of these skip tracing companies. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and start cold calling everybody. Now, as long as that abandon rate starts going down, the people that were not able to go ahead and reach throughout this seven day period, when the fourth day comes, we'll start doing RVM. So the people we're not able to reach, right? And the ones, what we're kind of doing is we're trying to either get a deal. And number two is we're trying to go ahead and get as many people as we can to, to, to mark, to basically get all the clutter out because we're going to get a lot of people that are going to say, Hey, listen, we're not interested. Right. Yeah, yeah. So once we're able to go ahead and dumb all that down, there's going to be a lot of people that you can't contact because literally they're just nowhere to be found. Yeah. Um, so what was, uh, or there's going to be people that we're just not content. We're not contacting them at the right time, which is the RVM comes in, in the play. Right. Because then we get them at their time whenever they want to go ahead and actually call us back. But the problem that I see with RVM is sometimes it's a game of tag, right? right? I leave you a voicemail, then you call me back, and then I have it routed to a 24-hour voicemail system to where now you have to leave a voicemail, then I call you back. So we're kind of playing a game of tag, but that's how you get to gauge the motivation of how serious they really are and interested, you know, interested in hearing my cash offer. Um, but what I, have, what I can tell you about is if you want to be successful at RVM, you want to use a, a woman. I, I like using women, so I'll have my, you know, my, my cousin or my girlfriend record something that I've written down for them as far as the RVM goes. And number two, what I thought, what I really like about it, and, and it seems to work, is um, answering them live, right? And, and this is you answering the RVMs live. Yeah, so we answer our our RVMs live, which um, you know, like I said, we have literally we we try when we do, we we like to go ahead and do RVMs on on a certain day. And for that, like, let's say we'll do them on Friday, Saturday and Sunday, we'll go ahead and have somebody literally try to go ahead and answer all of them up because we know that we're going to get it. How much, how much, how many RVMs are you doing? Like so we try to, yeah, so we try to, so now we're still in beta testing. Um, yeah. Last year I had like a couple deals off RVM. So now I'm trying to go ahead, you know, it is February, what, 18th today. So, you know, we are trying to beta test it, but. I try to go ahead and do around between 700 to 1,000 um, a day. Um, and then after that, you know, we're going to get a lot of people. So there is also a lot of people that just don't even listen to the voicemail. They just automatically call. So, you know, that, and, and literally that's, that's not that much. You know, 700 to 1,000 RVMs, that's not that much at all. We try to use different DIDs, obviously, um, and different numbers to make sure that things are, are done correctly. But that's something to where – we're still trying and it's, we're just getting a better response rate with answering live. If that makes sense. Right. What about uh, your direct mail? Is that coming in live or does that go straight to voicemail? The, so right. So my, like I said, so right now I haven't done direct mail. Um, I am looking on going ahead and doing another campaign this year. Cause like I said, it is, you know, we're, we're in the beginning. So just got a new podio system built. I was waiting for it to be built so I can go ahead and deploy marketing. But most of the time what we do is we have call rail then we have it linked to a 24 hour voicemail to one. As soon as they call, um, you can kind of go ahead and, and listen to our voicemail and it'll tell you exactly what we tell you in person, which is, Hey, my name is Brandon. Um, you know, I basically sent you this postcard cause I'm really interested in your, in, you know, in buying your house. Um, I drove by it or this, or we're buying homes in the area or whatever. We, we tend to switch it up and, uh, you know, they can choose to leave their, their, their number or not, but either way we go ahead and, call them back no matter what right. no matter what we give them a call back whether they abandon the call so on call where there's like abandon miss call and then voicemail so we have in our podio system different text messages for each one gotcha, gotcha. does that make sense yeah, yeah yeah um now as far you said you had an acquisitions manager on your team um can you break down his role and how do you compensate him 
Yeah, so she um she actually oh, okay. so right now we I give her a little bit more than what I'm you know but I like to pay people off value right so right now she's getting um thirty five percent which is a lot but she mm -hmm. literally she literally can do everything that I can do and the reason why I love working with her right is because to be honest with you she can go on appointments she she knows how to run renovation she flips so she knows how to do renovation numbers um. As far as building rapport, she's phenomenal. She's a realtor. Um, she knows everything. And it literally takes so much time off my hands to where I can, number one, do my KPIs with my cold callers. I can do marketing. Um, I, can, I can look at all the RVMs. I can literally do everything that a business owner needs to do, and that's what I'm worried about. Because to me, the deals are going to come. But the, literally what I think is hard is building a business. Because wholesaling in the beginning can become like a hustle, right? So you get one deal and then you're like, okay, how do I get my next deal? All right, oh, I got two deals. All right, how do I get my third deal? But how can you literally automate it, you know? So right now we're kind of in that stage, but I, I am looking for, you know, she just brings a lot of value. A lot of people wanted her. And I said, you know what? I know what you do. I know how you work. And uh, you know what? I really want you on the team. And for me, it's like, wow, okay, I'm giving up 30, 35% of my profit. But if I'm not working, I'm not even working, you know, 65% of that. You know, I'm literally working probably 50% of that. Because, you know, she's literally doing more, most of the grunt work, which is following up with all the leads. She plays everything, lead manager, transaction coordinator. So she's doing most of the stuff that I used to do that I was literally like, oh my God, I don't want to do this anymore. I mean, you want to because you know you're going to get paid well, but it's like, it gets tedious after time, you know? So, you know, and, and I and I feel like paying people based off their value is, is something that you need to do, you know? So why not? Absolutely. So what, what are your uh, what are your company goals for 2019? Are you looking to grow more? Are you looking to hire more? How many deals are you looking to do revenue-wise? Um, talk about that. What are your company goals for 2019? Yeah, so my, so my company goals this year, honestly, is to go ahead and make a million. I want, I want to make a million. Um, so, you know, I want to make a million and uh, I kind of want to keep it there. I don't know, you know, for me, as long as I'm able to make money, to be honest with you, as long as I'm able to make money, man, like I said, I'm, I'm just a, a kid from Queens, New York, rather that, uh, you know, growing up, I, I, just, I can't say I had a hard life, but, you know, I feel like it wasn't easy, you know, and for me, it was like, it's something to where if I can make, I was working at the hospital, literally like working 32 hours or something, making like three grand a, a month, $4,000 a month. So if I can make $3,000, $4,000 from just literally sending out emails or going on Craigslist from home, like right now I'm talking to you and I don't have to worry about getting up in the morning for work tomorrow. Right. Tomorrow I can get up at the time that I want. So I, I don't like to go ahead and I like to compete with myself. Right. And for me, it's like my goal, myself, my goal is to make a million um, and my company to make a million. But if I'm able to go ahead and, and literally be able to wake up when I want to wake up, if I want to or do whatever I want to do, that's that's literally my my main goal is to, is to do that, because I feel like there's a difference between rich and, and being wealthy. But a lot of the times from what I'm noticing, man, is that money doesn't buy everything. In the beginning, I wanted I was like, man, all I want is money, 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 money. And I started noticing that sometimes money doesn't buy everything. Right. So whatever God is willing to give me, that's what I'll take. Awesome, awesome. Um, can you talk about what um, – I know you went to the Carlos and Sal event. Shout out to Carlos. Uh, can you talk about what that, what that event did for you, uh, you know, mentally and for your business? Can you talk about why it's important to go to those type of events? Yeah, man. So I'm going to be 100% honest. From the time that I talked to Chris Chico – and the time, so talk to Chris Chico literally 2017 November, right? Started working 2018. And basically I made like, like if you see that video or whatever, I made like 60 grand the first like between January, uh, not really January, I would say like February and it was like a couple months, right? Made that 60 grand. Then I hit for a four, you know, started making more and more money. Um, anyways, Ran across them on Instagram, and I never paid for any type of event. Never paid for any event. Never paid for any uh, course. Never even bought a book on wholesaling. 
not even think or grow rich, none of that. You know, I just never, I just never did it. My, my whole thing was like, everything's on YouTube. What do I need? And, I, and I'm like, people say I'm half Jewish because I'm just cheap. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't know. You know, and for me, man, like I said, I, I think it's, it's a stigma that when you come from places like Queens, New York, or places like that, you, you feel like everybody's out to get you. Like you're on your own, you know, everybody wants to be a little selfish, you know? So our mentality is like, you know, and I hate to speak for other people, but it's just kind of like that. You know, when you grow up in those environments, you're kind of used to things just not going your way, you know, when it's because you kind of put yourself in that position or just, you know, your surroundings. So I posted Sal on Instagram and I'm like, these guys, like they really inspire me and they look like great guys, but I'm like, ain't nobody with a, with a Rafe and, and a Lamborghini. Like these guys got to be like real sour. Like there's no way that these guys are so happy. And so like, they want to help people and, and all educational and, and all of that, like, you know, cause I've, me growing up, I've met rich people, you know, and they're not that, sometimes they're not that very, you know, they're not that kind. Right. So I'm like, you know what, whatever. So one day, I don't know what it was. Oh, my birthday, October 27th. I call, I, 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 I wrote him, I wrote Carlos on, on DM and, uh, he didn't, you know, he didn't really write me back, but I spoke to Sal now, Sal took it down after me, but on his Instagram, he had call. You, you know, sometimes you can see the business and it says call or email. So on his thing, it said call. So I said, oh, okay, let me call him. So I called him, and, and, uh, and Sal Shakir picks up the phone. Wow. And I'm like, and he's like, yes, hello, who's this? And I'm like, oh, my name is Brandon. My IG handle is Bluetooth, uh, is Blue Notes Inc. You know, I want to talk to you about this, blah, 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 whatever. So he's like, hey, listen, if you want to talk, whatever, blah, 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 about that stuff, talk to Carlos. He'll be able to help you out. I said, okay, great. Gives me Carlos's number. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that's the wrong thing to do. So I gave Carlos a shout, and, he, you know, he's like, because uh, at that time they were going ahead and thinking about mentoring like 10 people or something. So I gave him, you know, I gave him a shout, and, man, after that, me and Carlos literally, we would speak every single day. You know, I would, I would hassle him, ask him questions, and, um, I was really skeptical. I was really skeptical. You know, I, he never at once asked me to do mentorship. I, you know, after building a relationship with him, like over a month, talking to him every other day and, you know, he would call people on the phone as well and, and say, you know, like he, I, I say, Hey, Los, I'm having a problem with, with this. Right. And he'd call somebody that he's talked to or networked with or that he teaches or mentors. And, and he would tell them, you know, tell me his story and how they're working it out. So, I'm like, man, this guy's really good. But at the end of the day, you never really know. Like, you never know what they do. Like, he's doing this over the phone. So I'm like, so anyways, I'm like, hey, you know, Carlos, I really want you guys to mentor me. Would you guys be able to do it? And he's like, listen, we don't really do this that much. We like to do the events and blah, 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 because it takes a lot of time. Let me talk to Sal and let me see if I can do something for you. Anyways, gives me a price, tells me when to come. I'm still skeptical. I'm, I'm out here, man. I, you know, I was like, oh, should I go? I'm asking this person. I'm asking that person. Um, and the closest people to me, they said go. Um, you know, uh, other people, there was a lot of people that told me, listen, you don't know these people. You don't know this. You don't know that. You're going to spend X amount of dollars on what? You know, that's insane. You could buy a car. You could buy, a, you could put a down payment on a house. You could buy a Rolex. You know, and I'm like, so whatever. I, I took the chance and went. And let me tell you that when I got there, there were great people. I didn't pay Carlos and Sal. I did a three-day crash course. I didn't pay Carlos and Sal to the second day, and that's because I gave them the check. They didn't even ask me for it. Literally, I think I could. I told Carlos all the time. I was like, I think I would. I could have just left, and you guys would have forgot about it. Because that's how much they literally. They just don't care about money. They they make money. Um, and ever since then, man, we've we've had a great relationship, and uh, I, I think I think it's something to where they really. Not not only did they help me in real estate, but they really helped me in the most important thing, which is in entrepreneurship, you have to bet on yourself. You, you know, you have, there's going to be times, most of the time, you're going to be uncomfortable. You're going to be scared. And me going over there, it really broke a big barrier, which is trust the process, my brother. Like, you know that it's going to work. You've been here before. You know, you've been here before. So my whole thing was I spent X amount of dollars and come back. January and literally 10x, 20x, whatever, what I spent. So 
it's like you don't you don't really learn how to I was talking with my girlfriend about this the other day, which is, you know, when you go to work, that you literally getting paid for labor. But when you do entrepreneurship or you go to events like that, they're teaching you how to work for yourself, for life, you know? So, I mean, it sucks to say, but I don't think that once you learn something, it's not going to be taken away from you. You don't need that. Per- you don't need that anymore because it's not going to be erased from your mind, right? So that money that you spend is well worth it. I tell, I tell people all the time. People go to Harvard, Yale, all these universities, spend X amount of dollars, come out in debt to be capped, capped at only making, your whatever, 250000 a year for the rest of your life and work hard hours. Or you can go to Carlos and Sal or go to this event or that event, learn how to make a million one year or make how to make 50 one year, but you can all do it from your, your house or you can do it with a company like, there's literally the sky's the limit, right? For a small amount versus you coming out of debt and being capped forever. Yeah, I think I think just to add on what you said, um, shout out to Carlos. He he, when every time every time I send him a message, he just responds. And when I reached out to him for that interview, first thing he said, "Well, let's do it, brother. When do you want to do it? What's the time?" Like he's that that kind of guy where he's very humble, makes a ton of money, but that doesn't stop him from help, helping people. So I just wanted to give a shout out to Carlos again. A hundred percent. A hundred. Yeah. Carlos. I mean, and Sal. Yeah. Sal. Shout out to Sal. Listen, Sal, Sal picks up my calls a hundred, but I don't, I don't call Sal. It's not that Carlos doesn't work, but Sal literally is like, that guy literally is. So, so I used to tell people all the time, man, listen, I'm from Queens, New York. Like, if you can make it, you can make it here, blah, blah, blah. Like, look at my upbringing. Look where I came from. I had no dad. I had a bunch of BS. When I met Sal, he's an immigrant from Iraq. Like, how can I compete with that? Right. You know, like, if he can make it and be a multimillionaire, like, I, I should have no excuse. You know, I literally should have no excuse because we literally, as U.S. Americans, we went to war with, with Iraq. So, to me, it's like, how, how can I be, you know, I have to be proud. I have to be happy that I'm at least an American. It's really hard to just even come into the state. So, you know, I, I feel like the excuses, like you said, they, they just have to be, you know, kicked out of the mind. And, and yeah. it's more of a mindset thing. I, I honestly feel like if you, if you do YouTube, go, you know, network with people and, and listen to us, you know, a lot of these interviews or podcasts and, you know, around your, you know surround yourself by successful people you'll definitely 100% be successful, but it's all yourself. You know, it's all yourself. I, I think when you negotiate with yourself, it kind of brings you down and that's when you get scared. But most of the time you're going to be okay. Right. Yeah, that's some great advice. As we kind of wind down here, last couple of questions here. I know you're rel- relatively young. You're about 26, 27. But is there any piece of advice you would have given your, uh, knowing what you know now, uh, to your 18-year-old self? Ooh, that's a hard question. Um, okay. So any, any advice that I would have given my 18 year old self, I think, I think it was to not make people not, not, I think my advice that I'll give myself is to, to stop worrying about other people and making them happy. Right. Because I wanted to make my mom happy. I wanted to make my dad happy. I wanted to make my family happy. And at that point in time, to be honest, it was like they wanted me in societies the way society wants you to do things, which is go to high school, go to college, retire, die, right? Um, and, and it was more so it was like I, I just wanted something more, but I wanted to make them proud. And I feel like if I would have started my real estate journey at 18 – I probably now, I, I, you know, I don't know where I would be, you know, but I think I'd be hopefully in a better spot. So I think it was more so following what I wanted to do, you know, mo- mostly following what I wanted to do. And um, I, to be honest, at, at, at 18, I don't know if I wanted to do real estate, but, you know, I think it was more so trying to make myself proud and be proud of myself versus, you know, trying to do what others wanted in, in life for me. And it's hard, you know, because your parents raise you. Yeah. So you want to make them proud. But I, I think at the end of the day, you know, you also want to be happy yourself because, you know, you're the one that has to live with yourself every day. So that's, that's the advice I would give myself. That's Good, great question, though. Yeah. 
Um, so last question, and this is ma mainly for the people who haven't closed their first deal. The, those are the people most of the time that are watching these uh, interviews. I mean, there's some intermittent people, but uh, for someone who hasn't closed their first deal, uh, what piece of advice would you give them um, to get that first deal? So the, the, okay, so the advice that I would give people to go ahead and close their first deal is, is to honestly, what you have to work on is, is being assertive and consistent, right? Because I get people that ask me, right? They'll DM me on Instagram or whatever the case may be. And they say, hey, Brandon, I want to get started in real estate wholesaling. What is it? And to me, it's like, if you can't go on YouTube or if you can't Google something, I'm sorry, my brother. Like, I love everybody, and, I, and I, Jesus has saved my life for sure. But this is going to be a hard business for you to honestly be successful because if you're not able to just go out there and Google something or YouTube something, you know, you, you don't want it bad enough. And I think that now real estate wholesaling has become really sexy. And what I mean by that is that a lot of people love the idea but don't want to put in the, the, the effort. Right. So everybody's like, wow, you can buy a house, no money down and make X amount of dollars. The idea sounds cool. Everybody wants to learn how to do it. But if it's not your passion, if it's not something that you really want to do, if you're not purpose driven, you know, you're, you're honestly, you're not going to put all your effort and you're probably not going to be successful. So number one, what I would say is, hey, listen, what is my motive behind wanting to do this? For me, I can sit here and talk about real estate all day. And I love helping homeowners like I honestly do. Um, and, and number two is you have to want it bad. Like I really wanted it bad. And, and what I would do is like, I would follow up, follow, follow up. Like once again, going back to the beginning of the interview, he said, Hey, listen, you can't do retail commercial this. And I would literally, like I said, that I would hassle him every day about him teaching. And what he started off was, Hey, listen, you're going to put out science for me. And I knew that if I showed him a little bit, he'd give me more. And if I did a little bit more, he'd give me more. So my whole thing is all the education is out there, man. Just go out there and literally put it, put it to the test. Prove me wrong. If I say, hey, listen, direct mail works and you show me, you know, you put out, you send out this amount of money or whatever and it doesn't work, then I'll help you personally. You know what I'm saying? Or Carlos says, this is what works. Prove them wrong. But at the end of the day is a lot of the times people just listen, 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 and they don't do. Yeah. So I think that you have to really want it. And it's not that hard, man. There's, there's people that are literally wholesaling in your market right now. There's people that are, are literally wholesaling off the, literally bandit signs. Why do you think bandit signs work? Because somebody must have made some money off bandit signs. Yeah. Craigslist. Why does Craigslist work? They must, somebody must have wholesaled off Craigslist. We don't make, you know, people don't make courses or do events because they just made it up. People make these courses or, or hold the events because it's been done before. You know, and people are innovated. RVM, that's innovation. Somebody was wholesaling or somebody was doing something and they said, hey, listen, I need to go ahead and try a ringless voicemail. Let me hire somebody to make this happen, you know, or a CRM system that could do this and do that. So I think it's just being tenacious, being consistent and trusting the process. Just trust, trust it. And, and, and there's no, you talking to me now, do you feel like there's a difference between me and you? We're both people. Right. And let me, let me add to what you said about people not willing to take, like I have this YouTube channel and I still get all my videos. What's our, what's ARV? What's RV? And I have like, did you watch my video? Did you take the time to watch a video, which I already talked about? Like it blows my mind that people, I don't know. I don't want to go on this. Right? 100%, 100%. And then also one thing I'll add to that as well. I think, you know, if I'm being completely honest, it's about consistency and then also uh, and reinvest the money back into marketing. Uh, that's been my biggest Achilles heel is not when you get a ten thousand dollar check, don't blow it, guys. Uh, you got to reinvest it, treat it like a business, and it'll 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 reap the rewards as a business. So yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent, and yeah. and that's what I'm saying. It's just something to where you know, just put it. If you can't literally just learn how to crawl, I'm not gonna be able to teach you how to run. Right. You know, so if you want to get your first deal. Show me, right? Because anybody, there's literally nobody out there that can say, hey, I DM'd Blue Notes Inc. or Brandon, and I, I DM'd him about a property, and he didn't answer. Because if you bring me a situation, I'm going to try my best to help you out. Now, I'm not a real estate mogul, but I'm going to try my best to help you out. But if, you, if you're if you like, hey, listen, I want to get started in the wholesaling, 
you know, what is it? What do you do? And I'm like, yeah, just, just YouTube it, my brother, because, you know, if you're asking me about that, I don't think you're going to want to get up at 10, 11, 12 at night to put out band signs. I don't think that you're going to want to put out Craigslist ads. You know, I don't think you're going to want to do that type of stuff if you can't even Google or YouTube something. So trust me, I, I wanted it bad. Yeah. When I tell you I wanted it bad, I really wanted it bad. I, I mean, sometimes, you know, if, if when, I, when I spend more than five, six thousand dollars in marketing, I, I honestly feel like I'm going broke. Literally. Sometimes I spend five hundred dollars and I'm like, oh, my God, I need a deal. I need. Come on. And I start busting out the phone myself. You know, my friends, uh, I have pretty good uh, other hosts, other friends that do really good. And sometimes they FaceTime me. And they're like, why are you writing bandit signs? And I'm like, oh, am I not supposed to? You know, I want to make money, you know? And it's like some people are like, listen, you're making X amount of dollars. You're doing X amount of deals, whatever. You should hire somebody. And I'm like, that's another thing, which is everybody wants to go ahead and hire a VA or co college to do this. And it's like, you have to stay in your own lane. You know, because if you only if you only did one deal, you can't you probably can't afford a VA, or you don't even need to have one. If you have enough time to make cold calls yourself, if you have enough time to do this yourself, why not do it? You know, because people will go ahead and do one or two deals, and then you know they'll have a VA or a cold call or acquisition manager, and a new deal comes along to where they don't know how to structure that deal correctly, and that person is relying on you to help them out. You're the leader, but if you've never been put in that position before. That deal's gonna go through the roof. I mean, it's literally just gonna crash. So I think experience is, is something big in wholesaling. There's every deal that I've done has been completely different, and I've had to do different things for each deal. So I feel like you know you have to even in the business. I know my lane. I know that I can't hire thirty cold callers right now. Um, I know that I can't do thirty thousand RVMs. I know what you know. I know what I need to do. But as I progress, I'll keep scaling, and it just comes from the first deal. You know, so, I mean, so for my, for my opinion, people ask me, oh, hey, listen, I have 500 bucks. Should I open up an LLC? My answer is no, because if you're going to take 20 to 30 percent of your marketing budget to go ahead and open up a business, right, to where you don't even have any business coming in, yeah. why would you do that? It's a waste of money, in my opinion. Uh, in the beginning. Yeah. In the beginning. Right. Or somebody, somebody tells me, Hey, listen, starting off, should I, sh you know, should I go, you know, um, should I go open up a website? Well, who are you going to show your website to your cousin and your mom? <laughs> yeah. it's, it's you only have, So like I said, guys, if you put hard work, hard work, dedication, and, and, and literally just grind out there, there's, I mean, you can make money off Craigslist. I've done it. You can make money off Zillow. I've done it, you know, and, and, I think it's a great way to, to go ahead and make money. What I love, you know, and I know we're kind of going, but what I love about wholesaling real estate, to be honest with you, man, is learning how to really invest in real estate. I tell all my cash buyers, hey, listen, can you, can I, can I watch this flip? Or, or I ask them a bunch of questions. So that's how I learn how to renovate properties. That's how I learn how to flip, you know, and, and do all of that type of stuff. Because I literally, once I sell the property, Every, every week or every couple of days, I go and look at the house and I ask the roofer questions. I ask the plumber questions. I ask this and that because I want to know for when I'm able to do it, it's free education. And, I, and he just paid me 20 grand to buy the house for me. Right. Yeah. That's a good way to kind of pick up, pick up some nuggets if you wanted to do it down the road. Man, it's good. This, uh, this, I think you dropped a lot of nuggets on this, uh, this interview here. So I want to thank you again for taking time out to do this, man. No, I want to. I want to thank you, my brother. Um, and like I said, I appreciate you for for going ahead and um and literally reaching out to me. Um, I'm very happy that you saw some value in me. So I appreciate that myself. And uh, like I said, follow up. You know, follow up is king. You know, um, we were supposed to do this yesterday, right. and you followed up with me. Right. You know, I could have completely forgot about it. Which, which to be honest, I almost did. And, uh, you know, that goes to show that maybe in your wholesaling business, you're doing something well, which is, you know, how to follow up with people. Right. Exactly. Because to me, if you never follow up and you hit and you contact me two months later, I'm like, well, he's probably not doing too well in his wholesaling business. If he can't even follow up with me and he wants this, you know, so follow up tenacity, you're going to wholesale. And, and like I said, I hope to meet you at the top. Hopefully you'll beat me there. Yeah, hopefully in Orlando when I move down there. <laughs> 100%, man. 100%. Oh, yeah, of course, man. We'll, we'll go ahead and make some money together. 
right, brother. Um, where can people connect with you uh, on your social media? Yeah, so social media, um, it's going to be Blue Notes, at Blue, the color blue, um, the word notes, like if you're writing notes, and then ink, at Blue Notes, Inc. Um, and on Facebook, it's just my name, Brandon Narain, N-A-R-A-I-N. Um, and I'm very open to uh, answering any questions. I do lives, um, any DMs, I try to answer them as much as I can. Um, and, and like I said, I, I like to do pop-ups, I like to go places. Um, Another thing is, man, a lot of people put themselves and say, you know what, I'm not him. And we're all human. You know, we're all human. I met Carlos and Sal. There's literally, I'm like, oh, okay, you're human. You know, I met Max Maxwell. You're human. You know, there's literally not, not too much different than, 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 than us, you know. So I like to put myself out there. And, you know, I, I, that's where I can be reached, though. Awesome. I'll have the links below. Thank you again, Brandon.